Hey guys, in today's video, I wanna show you which serve you need to master first. And this video is suited for beginner level players or intermediate level players who already started practicing the serve. So what will happen if you start implementing the slice serve or the kick serve too early in your serve development, you will develop major problems. And in today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you why. And guys, the reason why, it's pretty straightforward. The kick serve is the most difficult serve to learn. And the slice serve is also a difficult serve. The easiest serve to learn for an entry level player is the flat serve. And here's what I do with my students. Maybe you have seen my beginner lessons. Basically I have the student stand on the service line. It's too early to go to the baseline. This is too difficult. I have my students line up at the service line with the racket in the trophy position already in a continental grip. This is super important that players start using the continental grip right away because players feel more comfort very early on to use a forehand grip so a continental grip is must and the racket in the trophy position and now the toss needs to be at one o'clock and then just making contact with an extended arm then it doesn't need to be any type of follow-through this movement from the trophy position into the contact is all you should focus on if it's your first time serving and the reason why i minimize the take back is because the movement of the toss arm is very difficult uh, for most players because we're doing it with our weak hand with our non-dominant hand we don't really throw or toss balls with our hand we do everything usually with our dominant hand so the toss is a difficult thing to execute for players of all levels actually so in the very early on you all you need to focus on is just starting in this position and then getting used to that toss throwing it nice and high and ideally at one o'clock so the tennis serve at all levels is going to be easier to execute when the ball is struck below the apex this gives us more time to execute the quite difficult movement of a racket where the racket needs to go in and then out on the hitting side of the body this is a movement that is very tricky and is very unique to a tennis serve so in order to execute this movement properly a higher toss will give us more time to do so once you feel more comfortable with the toss, you can actually go back to the baseline and do the same thing from back here. You'll notice that you'll have to hit the ball a little bit harder. And then once you have gotten comfortable with that, now we go to phase two, which is that we're gonna drop the racket down towards the ground and execute the same movement. So the difference here is that the racket will have to go up to the trophy phase before it starts to drop. So we're gonna, instead of starting at the trophy position, we're gonna start at the bottom, toss the ball up, and then execute the serve. So when you do this movement, you are building a lag into your serve. And the big advantage of the lag is that you are separating the toss movement from the hitting arm movement. So the up together serve is a lot more tricky because you have to toss and take the racket back at the same time. And when you set your racket down here, you can focus on the toss first and then the movement of the racket. This is a lot easier to execute for most players. And it's one possible reason why the vast majority of professional players uses the lag. So the next step in the progression is that we are going to introduce a full service motion. So we can't serve from here. We are going to miss out on momentum. So what you need to do is connect the hitting hand and the toss hand inside the court. And we can call this step one. You're also going to have the weight on your front foot. From here, you're going to shift the weight onto the back foot. We're going to call this step two. Now step three, we're going to do two things simultaneously. We're going to take the racket back and initiate the toss while at the same time starting to shift the weight onto the front foot. So from here, we start to bring our racket up into the trophy phase, and then we execute our racket drop, and we make contact at the ball with a full extension of the arm. Now, the next step in the progression is that we can start using our body to help the arm out. And one thing we can do is that we can toss the ball slightly inside the court. We can also get on our toes and bend our knees. So basically, your body will help you get more power now that you're starting to use it. It's going to make it easier on the arm and it's going to feel more effortless to execute the serve. And basically, when you throw the ball in front, you're going to get a little bit of forward momentum. When you get on your toes and bend your knees, your body will have to straighten and you get a little bit of vertical momentum because of that. Also, the cartwheeling movement can be introduced where you're basically keeping the non-dominant arm up after you have released the ball. This will naturally enable you to get a tilt of the shoulders that will naturally reverse as you accelerate into the ball. So let me show you all these things combined. And guys, the reason why I teach the serve in this way is the following. It is absolute fact 
that the kick serve is the most difficult serve in tennis. It is so difficult that even some professional level players are uncomfortable hitting kick serves in matches. They might be able to do it in practice, but when it comes to match time, they'll rather do two first serves or they'll do a slice as a second serve. What happens to a lot of players that learn the kick serve too early is that they end up with an inability to hit a flat serve, so are basically stuck with very weak serves because the fact about the kick serve that's undeniable is that it's not a powerful serve. Naturally, if you execute the kick serve correctly, it takes a lot of power out of the ball. And if it's learned too early, players get so used to this lateral swing path that they have a very difficult time flattening the ball out. So as much as they try, every serve has some kind of funk on it. They have a very difficult time at getting power on their serves. Another big factor why the kick serve shouldn't be learned first is that players do not possess the proper fundamentals, therefore don't have a lot of acceleration. So what happens with recreational players that learn the kick serve too early, they will have a lateral approach towards the ball. So naturally, high level players with all the correct fundamentals present in the serve, even on the kick serve, will have the racket go out towards the back and have a forward approach towards the ball and then a diagonal swing path on their kicker. Recreational players, however, uh, don't possess proper fundamentals. A lot of the stuff that I talked about in the beginning is missing on the serve. Therefore, there's not a lot of acceleration and the racket unfortunately doesn't whip out and come forward towards the kicker. It goes laterally towards the contact point, which makes the contact extremely thin. And not only that, often results in frame shots. Also, players build such a muscle memory in a toss that's arced and they always have the toss travel towards the 11 o'clock area on right handers. And this is something that's also very difficult to break if it's learned too early. So a toss like this will be okay on a kick serve, but it will cause major problems if you're trying to hit a flat serve or a slice serve. Because a sideways toss like this will almost guarantee that the racket is more tilted towards the side at the moment of contact, which makes it impossible uh, to get slice on a serve and it makes it very difficult to flatten the ball out from this position. So for those reasons, the next serve you should learn in your serve development is a slice serve, which can be used as a change up on a first serve or can be used as a second serve early on in your development. And this is a serve that's a lot easier to learn than the kick serve for the following reason. You can execute the slice serve with the same amount of torso rotation that you have on your flat serve. That part on the serve is not gonna change. The only thing you need to adjust is the toss where you can throw it a little bit more uh, to your right if you are right-handed naturally uh, with this toss you get an automatic slice serve so if you throw the ball at two o'clock naturally the racket will travel further towards the right it will be more vertical at contact and since the racket is going towards this side it's likely going to continue going uh, that way and that will impart slice on the ball when the racket comes laterally across the ball this way with a more vertical position of the racket head and uh, now we're talking about a slice serve so this will naturally happen if you toss the ball more to the right if you're right-handed. Eventually, you don't want to throw the ball way off to the side because number one, it's very easy to read, but also you do lose a little bit of power when the ball is tossed too far away from your core. So you're going to start sliding that toss more towards one o'clock. And now the easy technique uh, to develop a slice serve is a proper finish. So if you intend to finish with the strings facing the sky and the palm of your hand up towards the sky, and this will naturally help you with more of a lateral swing path at contact and it will result in a slice serve. So when you get comfortable with the slice, it's time to learn the kick. And the great thing about doing this progression where you're learning all the fundamentals of the other serves first, and then you introduce the kick, there's really only two things that you need to do different in order to generate kick on your serve. The first thing you're going to do on your kick serve is stay sideways. You're not going to allow the body to rotate like it has on the previous two serves. So you're going to hold the torso rotation. In other words, stay sideways. Another thing that you're going to do is you're going to have to toss the ball further towards the left if you're right-handed. It is adequate to leave it at 12 o'clock, but I actually prefer it at 11.30. So you're going to throw the ball slightly to the left. It's okay for the toss to arc into that position. I don't see any problem with that. When you arc the ball, make sure that the ball isn't traveling too far over this way. If the ball falls through a hoop, like a sky hook in basketball, and it falls through at 11.30 when you do those two things. Only two things. You don't need to change 
anything else, if you already possess the fundamentals, then you get a natural kick serve because when you stay sideways at contact and the ball is more on this side of your body, naturally the racket will be turned more towards the side and then when you go diagonally across the ball, you will impart topspin on your serve. So guys, that's how you develop a kick serve. I know it's not easy because developing the proper fundamentals can take a lot of time and then getting enough repetitions on the actual kick serve in order for it to be match ready takes a lot of time as well. How much? This will depend on how much you can practice. I can just tell you that junior level players take years to develop the kick serve. So this is going to have to be a long-term project. Let me tell you a story that relates to this video about a student of mine that you know. Alec is one of the students that I feature in my videos. The most recent video of him that I released was the match play video. And Alex is a very interesting story. He's a good player. He used to be a 5.0 level player because he competed in men's open tournaments here in Southeast Florida, a very strong competition. These were prize money tournaments and he was able to win a few matches. So at that particular time, uh, I was rating him as a 5.0. Now he works, he doesn't get to practice that much anymore. So I would say his current rating is more of 4.5. And he is a very good athlete, very talented player. His serve, is very lively. His first serve was once measured at 127 miles an hour. And the story is the following. Alec started very late with tennis. He was a beginner at the age of 16. And he did play a little bit on his own uh, before he hired me. Once we started working together, the worst shot out of all of them was his second serve. He basically didn't have a second serve. It was either two first serves or a classic tap in on the second serves, which he didn't want to do uh, he was being more aggressive, so he would double fault 10 to 20 times a match, and it was an absolute impossibility that he was gonna win any matches, not even sets, at the men's open level down here in Florida. So after maybe six months of us working together, his ground strokes were looking uh, very solid, especially his forehand, uh, but the serve was still a problem. So I told Alec that in order for him uh, to be competitive at that level, which was his goal, he actually wanted to take it even further and play futures, which I advised him and not to do because he wasn't anywhere near the level that's required to be able to be competitive at those type of tournaments. So what I told him that we needed to do is spend an entire year of only doing second serves. And that's exactly what we did. We spent an entire year working on the second serve so that it could be match ready and the results were amazing. And as I contribute the results to the work that we put in, if we would have left the kick serve to like five minutes of our practice towards the end, it would have never developed into a serve that he could use in a match. He needed to get the reps in with my supervision that he was executing the proper fundamental elements of the kick serve and then doing it over and over and over again so that the body could remember it. And the hard work paid off because after that year of hard work, Alec was confident enough to hit that kick serve in a match situation. And it was only then where he was able to be competitive at the men's open level uh, down here in Florida. So guys, when it comes to the kick serve, and the slice serve for that matter, take your time. Learn the fundamentals of the flat serve first. If that means you have to tap in your flat serve for a little while, I don't see any problem with that. I'd rather have you do that than trying to develop the kick serve too early, which won't work in a mass situation anyway, and then possibly cause some long lasting bad muscle memory on your serve. Learn the flat serve, then the slice, and leave the kick for the end.